Thelma, can you briefly explain the concept of management streams? Yeah, the idea of streams came because there are several directions where you have to go to management and what you do in management is a never-ending flow of tasks, of activities, which is similar to a stream, right? So the name go into there. Effective management is the backbone of any successful organization. And a crucial part of it is understanding management streams. So what are they and why should you care? Well, in simple terms, management streams are the different channels through which information flows within an organization, allowing managers to make informed decisions and drive real results. In today's episode, I'm talking with Dalmo Cerne, Senior Manager of Machine Learning Engineering at Workday, about the concept of management streams and why it's vital for effective leadership and organizational success in the AEC industry. I'm your host, Anthony Fasano, and this is the AEC Leadership Show. All right, now I'd like to welcome our guest onto the show for today. Dalmo Cerne is Senior Manager of Machine Learning Engineering at Workday. Dalmo, welcome to the AEC Leadership Podcast. Hey, Anthony. Thank you for the invitation. I'm happy to be here. So, Dalmo, maybe you can start off by telling our audience a little bit about yourself, your career journey, and kind of, you know, what you've gone through in your career leading up to your role at Workday. Absolutely. This is more of a story many people share with me. It's not much of my story, but this story I've seen happening over and again, not just with myself, but other folks. It's about being an individual contributor and then later moving into management and discovering that this set of skills, what you need to do, expectations, is completely different. All that knowledge that you learned before and the things that you're good at, they are of little value right now. It it does help. It does help. It does have value, but it is a different set of skills. So making that transition and then discovering that there is very little out there to help in that transition. There is very little where people can really go and become good at management, become good as a leader, right? There, There is lots of advice out there. They, they are few good advice, but they don't really amount to anything, right? They say, oh, leaders should be this or that. And you can fill the blanks, but in the end of the day, they don't really teach you how to be a great manager. They don't really teach you how to be a leader. So that was one of the motivations to see, is there something out there? Can I make a contribution to that conversation and help others that come and share a similar story uh, to me? Well, then as I was putting things together and creating my own frameworks and uh, trial and error, People starting come, started coming to me and asking, what has been working for you? I see that there is some degree of success of here. What has been working for you? Can you help me with this? And I said, instead of just keeping this message to a few people I know and can reach, can I expand that universe and share the message with more people? Right. So today I have been doing that at uh, Workday. We are a successful machine learning team and... Uh, been cranking up some great products. That's great. So you had a career, you know, working on as an individual contributor, working on technical type work, and you made a transition into management, into leadership. And, you know, you really had to figure out, you know, your style, you know, how you were going to be effective. And you've done that and you've spent some time now around this idea of management streams and you've written about management streams. And so, Dalmo, can you briefly explain the concept of management streams? Yeah. The idea of streams came because there are several directions where you have to go to management. And what you do in management, it's a never-ending flow of tasks, of activities, which is similar to a stream, right? So the name go into there. And in this framework, I chose 
four different streams. I call them the reservoir, which is you managing yourself. Downstream, where you manage your team, projects you manage, operations. You manage upstream. That is your line of management. Those are stakeholders. Those are shareholders, customers, and so on. And the last one is side stream, which is cross-discipline activities, peers, product managers, and legal, and so on. Putting everything together becomes a basis of the framework for you to become effective as a manager, right? It's not only managing your team or managing your project that is going to be insufficient. You need to be able to manage in all those other directions, but it all begins with managing yourself and even becoming aware of those directions and what you have to do to manage those, right? It sounds funny, like, are you saying that we're going to be managing my boss? No, not really, but you're going to be collaborating with them. And uh, when you collaborate with them, understanding expectations and so on, that helps with the management in itself, right? So you, you're going to be uh, working together, collaborating and coming up with, at the end of the day, what really matters is the output that your team at the company produces. Yeah, I like that a lot. I mean, it's interesting and it's for someone who's analytical by background, it's nice to think of things in different, you know, components or sections like these four different um, streams, if you will. And I think that what's nice about it is kind of what you're doing is you're cater categorizing kind of the different groups of people that you might interact with as a manager, right? You might interact with someone senior to you or someone that you report to. You might interact with those that report to you. And then, like you said, the reservoirs, you still might have to do some stuff on your own, you know, kind of oversee some of your own tasks. And then, of course, that side stream being, you know, another discipline within the company, another team that you're working with that doesn't necessarily fit those other kind of streams. So I, I like that a lot because it can give you a nice way to think about how you're going to approach each of those different groups to be effective as a leader. And what I'd love for you to talk a little bit about is the importance of managing these multiple streams and not just downstream, but doing so, especially in an industry like architecture, engineering, and construction, where there's a lot of very technical projects. Yeah, absolutely. If we spend a moment on the downstream topic, it is perhaps where you're going to spend most of your time, right? Even though you do have to manage the other ones, but most of your time, you're probably going to continue investing in managing downstream. And the reason for that is because you want to be effective. You want to be able to, in the terms of construction, depending on what the, is like, is it there's a house or a bridge or, or there are many things, that are an entire building, right? You need to be able to build that, that we withstand the test of time. There's going to be high quality and so on. So you're still going to spend quite a, a little time quite some time over there. But that could lead to tunnel vision, thinking that this is the only thing that matters because rarely is the case that the plan goes according to intent from the beginning. <clears throat> Things happen, circumstance changes, and there are all kinds of uh, things that you have to adjust and adapt. Uh, you may need to request more funding where are you going to go for that? That's going to be upstream. You're going to be able to mm -hmm. request that, explain why, how we're going to manage that, what are the impact it's going to be. You may need, uh, there may be like a change in requirements and new legislation that passed in the middle of construction. We have to adapt to that. How are we going to deal with that? You're going to in interact with the uh, legal team. We're going to perhaps need to change your marketing message. You're going to have to train the salespeople to include that in, in a pitch. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, different topics going on. You need to be aware of all of them. Because of the position you occupy, you are in a unique vantage point to be that agent of change and to make sure that you you are the piece of uh, you, the glue that binds everything together. That's great. And I really like the fact that these other streams again, make you realize that there's multiple parties you need to communicate with and it can help you to think through that a little bit, which is which is really nice. 
So, Dalmo, what are some of the common management challenges that you've kind of observed and how have you been able to address some of those through the work you're doing? Yeah. If we go back to the the tunnel vision is maintaining your focus only on what needs to be done, managing the project, making sure that you meet deadlines, but that may come at at the expense of the team, for example. Or you may be missing other um, aspects that you need to pay attention to. That leads you to to be managing things by interruptions, right? Oh, something happened. We need a new truck with uh, concrete, for example. Oh, I'm just going to go in and solve this. You're just reacting to interaction to interruptions rather than planning ahead. Plans they rarely work. But the act of planning is extremely important. The act of planning forces on you a discipline to structure your thinking, to be able to communicate that to other folks. Going back to managing upstream, how are you going to justify the expenses? How are you going to get budget for that? How are we going to get buying in into a project? Right? So that ability to structure your thinking, communicate effectively. So we're going to also be managing expectations, right? It's not only planning and coming up with a plan, but at the end of a period, and that should not be the beginning and the end of the project. There should be some intermediary milestones. You need to do some kind of status status reporting. But it's not just say, oh, I want to talk about this. No, what is important to be discussed? What are the expectations on upstream, right? Your upper management, your customers, what are their expectations? What do you want to talk about, right? What you need to report in your uh, status update, because that may lead to changes in things you need to do, operations of of the project, any other number of uh, items that you have to to react to, right? So going back to your original questions, observing those Tunnel visions, reacting only to interruptions versus planning ahead, not doing status reports, not structuring your thinking into a disciplined document that you can move forward. So those are all things where a manager or leader can fall short in their expectations and then the entire team, the company ends up suffering. Yeah, so... Basically, like one of the things I guess this is helpful for is to avoid you from just getting kind of trapped in just the reservoir, right? Because you know you have these other streams you have to deal with. And if you don't remember those or think of those and manage those, you're just going to be focused on yourself, which you can't do as a leader. Exactly. So that's a great, great framework to be able to help with that. So one of the things I want to ask you about is today's environment projects have become very complex. There's lots of different things going on. There's lots of different communication channels. So how do the frameworks in management streams, how can they help you to handle some of the more complexities in today's kind of business environment as opposed to some of the traditional methods? That's a great question. And uh, I always understood this framework of management streams to be an evolutionary step, not a revolutionary or disruptive. It's less about the new versus the old and more about what do you need to know to be an effective manager, to be a great leader, is filling that gap where you find yourself in a position where you think thought you knew something, you thought that you were an expert, but now you discover that you just know that you don't know, right? So management stream is about filling that gap of defining what management is, defining expectation, defining what you were supposed to be doing, and later on you grow on top of that, but at least you have a solid foundation upon to build your career on that. So it's Less about the contrast between the new and the old. I do propose new things as well. That's why I call evolutionary, not uh, disruptive, not not revolutionary. So I do propose new things, but there's a lot of people, smart people who came 
before us and they already made their contributions, right? Some of that or a lot of that it is worth preserving and giving continuity, right? Those things survive the test of time. But like with anything else, with changes of time, there are changes in other things that we have to evolve, we have to adapt and build on top of that. So management streams is, is that. Is you land on a place where now you know what you're doing, you know how you're growing, and you know how to meet those expectations. People talk a lot about the Peter principle, where they say that someone gets promoted at a working level where they become incompetent, and then that's the level where the person stops. I'd like to offer a different perspective of about the Peter principle, is that you reach a certain level where you no longer know what you you're supposed to do and you spend so much time either learning what you need to do or you you just give up and say hey i don't want to know learn that stuff anymore that's where you stop but if before you land on that position you you know where you're going no longer you are incompetent right because you got all those promotions you grew professionally professionally all the time in all those opportunities that is a statement that there is competency, but then you reach a level that I just don't know. Well, how can you know what you don't know? But with the framework like management streams, you are better prepared. The chances of you being successful are much higher. Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, I think that, I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there when it comes to leadership and management. But for me personally, I like things that are simple, right? And I think your framework is very simple. You have the four streams. And you can think about those four streams in different ways. Like how, how do I need to communicate with each, with each of those groups, right? And how often do I need to communicate with each of those groups? And I think, I think it's frameworks like that that can be very helpful for a manager who has a lot of things going on to be able to organize their thoughts or organize their approach. You know, and at least I know for technical professionals, that can be very helpful because by nature, by nature, we're technical so anything that is kind of easy to navigate, kind of a framework, kind of something that's organizational can be very helpful, which I think why that's that's nice. So let's talk about why is self-management or that reservoir stream so crucial for effective leadership in the management streams framework? Yeah, that's the first one I approach. You need to be able to manage yourself and have some degree of discipline, being self-aware of what are the things you're good at and things that you may not be as good at, right? And there are opportunities for delegation in both. In one, when you're good at and you delegate, you can be a mentor uh, to the person that you're delegating tasks to. When you're not good at and you delegate, is a chance for you to learn from the person who, who is doing the task. The person may be much better than you and is an opportunity for you to learn. Another aspect is what I call the gap between reaction and response. Because in a management position, there is a gap in hierarchy between you and the individual contributors. Anything you say or do may be magnified many times over. So once a situation happens, it can be a discussion, it can be a conversation, it can be a reaction to something that happened on the field. You're going to react internally in a certain way but you need to be able to control yourself to that reaction internalize that and then own the gap between your reaction and how you respond to the outside right controlling that response may make the whole difference on everything mistakes happen errors happen but how we react to those does make all the difference so if you can Acknowledge that you're going to have a personal, intimate, internal reaction. Then say, I can own that space. Now let me choose how I'm going to respond. That could make a difference of you having a great team that sticks with you for a long time, right? You give longevity to the team. They start trusting you more and more because how you do this, right? Other aspects include uh, establishing core values, for the team, what are the things that are important? Things or actions or behaviors that are important to you and the team. In my case, I, I enumerate three of them: integrity, 
curiosity, determination, integrity, because without that, the, the, the others don't really matter, right? Curiosity, you're always learning, you're always growing, you bettering yourself uh, over time. And determination is because even if you learn something, sometimes you give up too early or you don't finish a project. or So you do have to have that determination to push things uh, across the finish line, right? So all of those things are part of uh, managing yourself and uh, having a great reservoir to flow into the other streams. Yeah, I think that's great. And I, I really like what you said about the idea of how you respond to something internally, you know, with that gap before you actually externally respond to someone and being cognizant of that. And I know that, you know, if you're in a conversation with someone one-on-one, -on -one, that can be very difficult because you're kind of responding right in the moment. If it's like an email, you have a little bit, it's a little bit easier because at least you can write an email, but not send it. And then maybe, you know, take a break for a few minutes and then come back and read it and maybe, you know, make it a little bit more appropriate. So I do think that that's something that you can learn and get better at over time. And as you have more conversations and more high level conversations, but it's kind of like you almost have to slow things down in the moment. So you can kind of really understand what that person's saying and think about how your response to them is going to, you know, affect the conversation and affect kind of what you're trying to accomplish. And I think that's something that is challenging, especially for beginner leaders, right? New in leadership, because you may not be used to having those types of conversations. But again, I think using the streams, you can think about the different bits or groups of people that you're going to be dealing with. And that may be helpful for that. Absolutely. And, uh, Sometimes it's becoming comfortable with silence. Uh, and it's a very hard thing to do. You feel compelled to fill the gap with your voice or with your thoughts, right? But if you observe many of the great leaders who happen to have footage uh, available, they are comfortable with silence. They listen to a question. They take a few moments to think and uh, respond uh, to that question, right? They gave the time to feel comfortable with silence and they own that gap in how they responded. Yeah, no, that's great. So, Dalmo, looking at managing downstream, what should team leaders in the AEC industry look for when they're assembling a team to ensure they have kind of the right mix of talents and motivations for that project? Yeah. So, I like to make the analogy to a sports team, right? Imagine basketball, American football. If you get a superstar team with 10 quarterbacks, you're not going to go very far, right? Everyone's a quarterback. Someone has to receive the ball on the other end, run it, then do the, the touchdown, right? The same thing for a team to run a project. What are the skills that are necessary for those people to complete that project? Not everyone can have the same skills. I speak in a more abstract way where I enumerate three of those skills. The first one is a visionary. Visionary is a thinker, someone who come up with solutions to problems. They can see Customers struggling with something, they know what improvement needs to be made. They have influence on the roadmap of the product or the execution. They can be an engineer, they can be yourself, they can be a product manager, someone either with technical knowledge or someone with expertise in the area. But the visionary, you don't need many of those in your team, right? You need one or two because those are more abstract thinking people. They also do things. There's no such a thing as a pure visionary, but they, they have like a strong side of that. So the second uh, category of folks that I, I speak abstractly is the, the problem solver. Those, they know how to transform a concept many times pro, uh, provided by the visionary, and they know how to build something tangible. They know how to scale things up. They know how to solve that problem. They know how to build a better mousetrap. And those are the, most of the people you need are those problem solvers, right? And the last one is what I call the forwarder. Uh, they are the people who remain focused until completion because it is the tendency of most people 
as you are approaching the completion of a project, they already start thinking about what is going to be the next project and they don't dedicate themselves as much to finishing this, uh, the project at hand and they are already like mentally switching context going someplace else. You do need those folks where they stick to the mission and go on until it's complete. Imagine if you were running a marathon and this like half a mile from the finish line, you're feeling hungry and you see a hot dog stand and you stop. Like, oh, I did most of it. I can't eat the hot dogs. No, no, it doesn't count. Until you go across the finish line, it doesn't count, right? You wait until the hot dog after the finish line, not the one before. And uh, so those are the three abstract concepts that I use to assemble a team. Having a visionary, have many problem solvers and having a few forwarders because without them, you're going to fall short somewhere. Depending on the domain, people may think that those are the same types that they, they need, but may need an ad adaptation or an extra type. So you're going to have to adapt for each situation, but with this basic framework, you, you, you can adapt to your use case. That's great. And I think sometimes in the AEC industry, you don't always get to pick your team, but you can try to recognize those traits within your team that download just kind of walk through and try to see what you have. And, you know, if you think there's a real deficiency, you may be able to talk to your supervisor and say, hey, I'd like to bring someone else onto the team that maybe is a visionary or a problem solver because we're, we're lacking that right now. Because I know sometimes you have a team and that's the team you have to use. But other times, depending on your situation, you may be able to build a team or add to your team. And so I think keeping those things in mind can be very beneficial. So, Dalmo, what are some implications to a project when there is a misalignment with the upstream? If there is a misalignment with an upstream, uh, you have a problem right there, right? Because somewhere before the misalignment, communication fell short. Right. The more you can join the conversation, uh, I, I like the, I was listening to a, a podcast where Mark Andreessen from Andreessen Horowitz, the venture capital firm, he was part of that conversation. And he came up with the thing that I thought it was super interesting. He said, if you are not at the table, you are on the menu. I don't know if it's his or it needs to be attributed to someone else, but I heard him say, so I may be misattributing, but that's how I heard this story. So your line of management, it is better for you to be part of the conversation than you be just taking orders, right? And you become part of the conversation by being part of the plan, drafting the plan, making suggestions. Uh, showing your own plan, showing your status report at each milestone, right? The more your line of management see you participating like that, the more they include you in the conversation uh, earlier on. Then you're going to be able to influence the conversation and or perhaps a better word would be persuade in the conversation on where funding should go, what influence or what impact your project or your piece of the execution has in the, in, in the whole project. So those would be extremely important and there's no one else to do it but you, right? It's extremely important that you have a functioning channel with conversation going with uh, folks upstream. And sometimes they make a decision because they do have to make a decision, but if they have incomplete information, it may be a bad decision for you. It's not that they were bad people, but because of they didn't have the information that you have in mind, now they base their decision on incomplete information. So that one would fall on you because you were not part of the conversation. So having that communication channel open, talking with them, participating in the conversations, that is a fundamental part in managing upstream. If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. <laughs> I like that one. All right. So how about side stream relationships, like peer-to-peer -peer collaborations? How do those contribute to the success of your projects or your work? Absolutely. Um, no one is an island, right? And um, 
Imagine a pizza pie building something or executing that. It's going to be one of those slices of the pie, but they're going to be, depending on the kind of product, focus groups that people who eventually will buy the product, they're going to be giving their opinions, right? There's going to be folks on customer support. If an issue happens, how do you react to that? How will you address that? There's going to be even before you start selling the product, marketing team, they're going to come craft a message on how you're going to bring that to, to market, right? If you build something no one buys, it's going to be a waste of your time. There's going to be the legal team, uh, the compliance team, sales team, they're, they're the ones who are actually going to be executing the sales. All of those people, they need to be intimate with the product. They need to know more details. They need to be able to communicate back and forth with them. Going back to uh, upstream, but making a parallel to with the legal team, they may be based assumptions on some limitations that you say, oh, that one was a misconception or a, a misunderstanding. Here's what it really is. So you can have like a the legal team work with you in adjusting the messages or adjusting compliance to certain things. Marketing team, they may be putting forward a message highlighting certain aspects of the product, but they said, oh, but this other aspect is so much better. It would be have like so much more impact. Working with those people, it's extremely important. And there's one uh, particular group where I highlight with uh, perhaps greater importance is the product manager, right? I like to define a product manager as someone who lives in the future, but during business hours comes back to the present to tell us what the future looks like and what we should be building, right? <laughs> Having a good relationship with those folks is extremely important, yet it is a point of constant friction because they come up with the impossible and it's up to us to match that uh, that impossible, right? So you can see there's room over there for some friction. That's why it's important to have a good relationship with them because you can get over that friction, rinse, repeat, and carry on. Yeah, that's great. I love that, especially in the AEC industry, because we have a lot of firms that'll be multidisciplinary, right? So you have your design team, you have a survey team, you have a construction side of the business, and they you need to be collaborating with all those other departments to make sure that the project comes together. And so it is very important to understand all of those side stream groups or parties that you need to be in constant communication with and ensuring that that communication is happening. That's, that's very important. And I think all of our projects. So that's great. So Dalma, what final piece of advice can you share with architecture, engineering, construction professionals that are kind of looking to grow in their management and leadership capabilities? Absolutely. Let me think over here. Talking about my experience, the thing I missed the most was understanding what leadership and management is. So trying to not only be good at what you do, but what the space is of leadership and management. What are the skills necessary? What needs to be done? It is important for you to be able to be effective before you are efficient. Being effective, you always see that in more consumer, consumer good products that you have a version 1.0 that is good, but is not great. And then you have version two that is so much better that inco incorporated all the bells and whistles. And so being effective is being able to deliver that first product, is being able to complete the construction, is being able to really put the results forward. Along the way, you're going to learn better ways of doing. The hindsight benefit is going to say, oh, if I have to do this again, Here's how I can do it much better. That's where you become efficient, right? So it is important not to go with uh, premature optimizations because that can compromise your ability of being effective. So if you try to be efficient before being effective, uh, in my experience, that wasn't best, uh, always the best choice. Expectations, 
not only from your customers, but from your line of management, from your team, from your peers, what are expectations. You're not managing by committee. That's not going to end well, but you need to know what are must-do expectations that needs to, to be met, right? So having doesn't mean that you must meet all of them, but if you know an expectation you know you're not going to meet, you can be proactive and communicate with the person and say, this expectation is not going to be met. What are the mitigation uh, actions that we can take uh, to do this? Can we stretch time? Can we reduce scope? Things like that. At the end of the day, uh, we all get measured by our output, right? So that that's also true for management and leadership. That's great. And again, it was just thinking about this. What I really liked about the conversation that we've had here today with Dalmo is that the management streams concept to me is a way to take a relatively simple framework that you can lean on as a leader to really think about all the different parties you need to communicate with, right? Your upstream, those you're reporting to or dealing with at a higher level, your downstream who's reporting to you, your side stream, those collaborators, those peers, um, other disciplines, and then the reservoir, which is you, right? The stuff that you still have to focus on on a regular basis. And I think in a world of a lot of different communication, a lot of different channels, I think having this framework to be able to kind of guide your communication efforts and your leadership efforts can be can be very beneficial. So, Delmo, before I let you go, where can our listeners find you, learn about you, read some of your writing? Absolutely. Uh, the best place, perhaps, is my website, dalmocerne.com. It's spelled D-A-L-M-O-C-I-R-N-E.com. I'm also on X, D underscore Cerny, and on LinkedIn, Dalmo Cerny. So those are perhaps the best places to uh, go find me, see writings, interact with me, and and so on. It would be great to talk to folks, exchange ideas, engage in good conversation. Dalmo, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and spending it with us here on the AEC Leadership Podcast. Thanks so much. Thank you. This was a great conversation. I really thought it was fantastic. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Dalmo, and I hope you'll think more about management streams and how you can leverage them effectively. If you enjoyed our conversation, please subscribe to our channel here. We put out videos like this on a weekly basis to help technical professionals become better managers and leaders. I'll see you next week.